Hi, and welcome to Factaganda number whatever. <laughs> sort of giving up on that. Um, today we're going to be, I'm dressed formally, so uh, because I want to talk about something formal uh, in science, um, and that is uh, predictions. That's right. Scientists can see into the future. Kind of. Um, basically, any good scientific theory um, should explain something, and that's actually one of the reasons why they're they're getting around to the idea of calling them explanations rather than theories. Partially because some people are just, well, it's just a theory. Yeah, okay. You know what? The Bible's just a book. Um, and partially because that's not... <clears throat> um, it's not... A, terrifically accurate representation of what it is. So uh, we're going to go with explanations. So when somebody comes up with an explanation for um, uh, some sort of phenomenon, uh, these, uh, these explanations are expected to predict future technology sort of post hoc. Um, for example, if, um, if we're archaeologists from beyond the zombie apocalypse, and we see these little creatures, all we have are their bones, right? And they got big, long fingers and big, curvy beaks. We might think that they, you know, they need the fingers to really grasp a hold of something like a coconut and crack it open with their beak. And then along comes some little vault that says, well, you know, if you were to web those fingers and maybe put feathers on them, those suckers could fly. And, yeah, well, sure, they Good. And then we find one in amber that's, you know, still got the meat and feathers on it. And sure enough, you know, or we find a picture of a flying bird or a coin or something like that. It shows them having feathers. And, oh, well, maybe the kid's right. You know, I mean, okay. So, um, that said, um, one of the most important things that the explanation of evolution uh, came about, brought about, was the the um, the field of cellular genetics. Um, back uh, back way way back, you know, um, we knew about inheritance. Okay, um, if uh, if you had three kids that looked like your husband and one kid that looked like uh, you know the milkman. And there was probably somebody putting some peanut butter in the chocolate, okay? Um, and, and, I mean, this goes all the way back. You know, Grog, why not... Why, I want wolves and, and oxen. Why not you give birth to wolves and oxen? Because they're your kids. <laughs> and, you know, cows always give birth to cows, and, you know, trees always give birth to trees. Nothing ever crossbred. Um... At least not in the short term. You know, you'd have funny looking ones every once in a while, and those funny looking ones became funnier looking ones later on. But that was your grandpa noticing that, not your grandkids noticing that, not you. Okay, so, um, so inheritance, um, in, in the time of, uh, Darwin's great experiments and his voyage on the Beagle and whatnot, uh, would have been described as uh, each generation inherent, inherits uh, information from the previous generation that defines how it will look and, to a certain extent, how it will perform in nature. Um, in modern terms, we would say that through the genetics encoded into each cell, the progeny receives genetic information from both parents, which, when combined, determines uh, how that progeny will appear and, to a certain extent, perform in the nature. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, the evolutionary explanation uh, predicted cellular uh, biology, the entire field. Um, and 
for 90 to 98 percent of you know the entire explanation of inheritance you know cellular biology covered or confirmed uh, what Darwin had said now you're thinking well what about that other two to ten percent okay so we had this big thing called the human genome project and when it started the theory was that once we once we you know can't love the human genome we'll know for sure that genetic material is the end-all be-all of uh, inheritance and that this material will you know this is this is like a book and you open the book to page 22 and that's the inside part of your arm you know and you, you open it to 4925 and it's the the inside of your eyelid and you know whatever okay um whoops 10 years later and to be honest a lot of scientists already kind of figured this this is like oh my god the world's round what a shock um 10 years later uh, the Human Genome Project ended. We all knew then that uh, something else was going on. That what we found in uh, our genes was not sufficient to explain how each of us looks and how we vary. Sorry. But it did lead to the field of epigenetics, which are part of that other things riding in the cell other than genes so the genes themselves are not end all be all they are like i said you know let's just say 95 percent of the structure of each creature okay but there's all sorts of little well we don't know exactly what they are yet but we we can describe them as like dials and switches and and things like that that turn on or amplify or you know reduce the effect of certain genes that you know make mongo big and strong and you know jolly little wimpy or something like that um so it, it's a new field it's a field that um uh, that we're still you know trying to fill out but i think most importantly is that it 100% covers the things that genetics did not. In fact, genetics, uh, genetics, in a way, predicted epigenetics. And in a way, evolution predicted them both. So with both of these fields now covering 100%, more or less, of inheritance, uh, evolutionary explanation, evolutionary theory, has been confirmed by the prediction of future scientists sci sciences these aren't the only ones there are many other fields uh radiologic dating of ge uh, geological formations in in, um, in fossil records combined to help form uh, uh confirmations of, of evolution so while it didn't, you know, evolution didn't predict radiographic dating, it was confirmed by it, you know. And the the results that we were going to get out of radiological dating were uh, uh, were ultimately predicted by evolution. So there you go. Inheritance and prediction. Um, I think that'll be a good title for this one. We have more. Um, this is one of the things that I've been that I've been brooding about for quite some time. It's one of the most, like I said, it's one of the most powerful things about science, being able to predict the future, and evolution did it in spades. So that's it for today. Uh, we've got about thirty seconds left, so I'm going to say, uh, y'all have a good time. Um, we're going to send a shout out to the Thinking Atheist and um, and all of the wonderful topics that he's come up with lately. I love that stuff. And uh, This Week in Science, of course. Love you, Dr. Kiki. And uh, our friends over at uh, uh, The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. So, anyway, um, 
you have a good time and we'll see you 